Hello and welcome to the section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to tackle this problem we have on the board. We have a 100 volt source, we have a 20 volt source, we have lots of 4 ohm resistors scattered everywhere. Here we have a voltage controlled voltage source. The value of this source is equal to uh, the value that lies across that 4 ohm resistor down there. So we have a mixture of independent sources and also dependent source. And this entire circuit here, whatever it's doing, is driving this load. So across terminal A and A and B, it's driving a load resistance R. And the question is that you'd be asked on an exam or a quiz, what value of this resistance do we need to choose to make sure that maximum power is being transferred from the circuit to this load resistance? Right? Obviously, we learned if we choose zero ohms, if we choose infinity ohms, we're going to get no power transferred in either case. So somewhere in the middle lies a perfect value, and that perfect value that results in maximum power transfer is simply chosen when we choose the value of this resistance to be equal to the Thevenin resistance of the rest of the circuit. And now you see why we spent so much time on Thevenin equivalent, because you use them you know, just for their own use, but then you also use them for things like this, maximum power transfer. You have to know on an exam that you know, if, if you didn't know that it was involving the Thevenin equivalent, you wouldn't know what to do at all. But you have to know, okay, I need to go calculate the Thevenin resistance. How do I do that? How do I calculate the Thevenin resistance? Well, remember, there's several ways to do it, okay? In this circuit, we have a, a dependent source, so it kind of limits your options a little bit. There's really a still a couple of ways you do it. You could find the open circuit voltage, the Thevenin voltage, and then you could find the short circuit current going through so you could take, for instance, take this resistor out of the equation and expose terminals A and B. You could find the Thevenin uh, voltage, you could find the short circuit current, and then you divide the two and that would give you the Thevenin resistance of the remainder of the circuit looking back. But that's kind of a pain because, you know, you have to take away this guy and then you have to do kind of some mesh equations to do the, the Thevenin voltage. And then you'd have to short circuit it and then you'd have to do the, the uh, find the short circuit current, which would be another set of equations that you have to solve and then you get those two numbers and you divide them. So it's bulletproof, it's just a little bit of work. Another way that we can do it, that we talked about when we have these sources like that, is we can eliminate the independent sources. So this is a voltage source, and this is a voltage source. Since they're voltage sources, we can short circuit them, kind of eliminate them. We can't eliminate these guys, you can't eliminate the dependent sources, but we can get rid of these, and then we can hook up a test current, right? a test signal to the terminals, and drive it with a known current. And then we can calculate the voltage that falls across that current source that we hook up out there. And as we talked about before, when we did these seven and equivalent problems, by getting the ratio of the voltage drop across a known test current, you're basically calculating the, the resistance of uh, the seven and resistance of, of the circuit as a whole as it behaves. So that's what we're going to do here, because you only have to solve one set of equations to get the Thevenin resistance. Remember, the question is, what value of R results in maximum power transfer? All you care about finding is the Thevenin resistance. You don't need to know the Thevenin voltage uh, because you're not asked for that. You're only asked for this. So let's start by redrawing the circuit. We're going to short circuit these two guys and we're going to hook a test current uh, over here. So what we'll do is scoot over to this board here and do that now. Now we still have the dependent source from the top. So let me go ahead and hook this up. You're still going to have this resistance here. You're still going to have a resistance that falls under it and the resistance that falls under there. Now when you get down here, you're gonna short circuit this guy, so it's gonna be gone. And then when you get here, you're still gonna have this resistance, but there is a source here, you're going to short circuit that 